patient hearing and I'm very Okay. This is about bionic pancreas. So let's look at some basics and some evidence about bionic pancreas and uh, what is the current availability in our country. So the bionics definition I was just going through and the last one through encyclopedia I felt very apt. Science of constructing artificial systems that have some of the characteristics of living systems. Now why do we require this evolution in technology in spite of all these CGMs, etc.? The artificial pancreas is required because if you look at this slide, the overall state of metabolic control on the left hand side you can see the current A1C and on the right hand side you can see the three months frequency of hypoglycemias which includes even seizures and comatose patients also. So this is why you require to address these barriers especially in type 1 diabetics to more effectively use current treatments and these technologies have to be to achieve the optimal metabolic control especially in type 1 diabetics. That is where the role of this bionic pancreas comes into picture and that is where we require. Now look at this slide, there are about 42 factors which can affect the blood glucose of a given patient, especially the day in and day out, intraday, interday, all these fluctuations and it's humanly impossible to counter this uh, uh, imbalance through our manually the sugars checking or including your pens and insulins etc. That's why we require a bionic pancreas which mimics physiology most of the times. And look at this evidence, one out of three high glucose episodes are not followed by the correction boluses, especially in type one diabetics, what we are mostly talking about. One out of two times the correction boluses are wrongly calculated and are managed wrongly. And the carb counting, most of the patients, including doctors as well as treating physicians, we feel difficulty to educate the patients and in turn the patients feel it's a burden for them to comply with this uh, uh, carb counting, especially during type 1 diabetics. Now we know after 100 years also, the insulin discovery, there are very few gadgets to deliver this. And the connected devices, what we want now is coming as a smart pens. And one of the things which is already there is such connected devices, they record time and amount of insulin delivered and there are apps connected to them and that's with a CGM and it's a comprehensive diabetes management can be done with these instruments. And to mimic physiological insulin delivery even better, there is a hybrid closed loop system and that is what we're interested today. So these are the connected devices what we're talking about, the BGM and the CGM, of course, then they're connected, they sync with these mobile apps and give us a better perspective about the patient's sugars. Now the insulin pumps we know, they provide a continuous subcutaneous insulins and the basal rates, the carb ratios, correction factors, the target blood, all can be customized for a given patient. And there are generally two classes of insulin pumps which are tubed and tubeless. This is how it looks and these are the shaded areas shows where these sites can be worn, the pumps can be worn. Now there are sensor augmented pumps and this is where the sensor augmented pumps display the CGM data to facilitate the dose calculations, but they do not, do not automatically adjust. And that's the difference between sensor augmented and uh, AI based uh, CGMs. By contrast, low glucose suspend and predictive low glucose suspend, we call it as PLGS systems, which can decrease or stop insulin. The PLGS system attempts to prevent hypoglycemia automatically suspending insulin whenever there is an impending hypoglycemia. Whereas in the other conventional, the low glucose suspend, in that concept, it is stopped only after hypoglycemia occurs. But there are no comparative studies for the outcomes between those two methods. Now, automated insulin delivery systems, or the AADs, are known as hybrid closed loop systems. This is what is our topic of interest today. And these use CGM glucose values to automatically increase or reduce the insulin delivery. Now these AAD systems increase basal delivery, uh, insulin delivery or deliver the automated correction boluses to treat or prevent hyperglycemia and can also stop or reduce the basal insulin delivery to prevent or treat a hypoglycemia. Now each AAD system allows users to adjust different pump settings and alters insulin delivery using a different algorithms which consider different parameters that can be individualized. And AAD algorithms have been shown to improve glycemic control, decrease hypoglycemia, and of course to decrease, reduce the burden of care and improve quality of life, especially in type one diabetics. Now this is how 
typically I'm sure all of you are aware, these are the various, the sensors, the pumps, the infusion set, before and after insertion, you can see there. And the infusion set is the link between the pump and the body. And of course, every two to three days, this is the cost what most of the patients or patients cannot. And this is a, a, a diagram which can depict the typical artificial pancreatic system, how it works. Let's go into the details, of course, in the couple of slides later. Now, this is how the evolution of CGM has happened over a period of time and the evolution of automation, that is insulin pump therapy along with the CGM. You can see there in Minimed, which is there, uh, 670G, and then the latest one is the bionic pancreas. Of course, it is in 1979, which first started with this, and insulin pump is not new, just to tell you that even the DCCT trial, the age old, it, it had more than 40% of the patients in the intensive arm on the insulin pumps. And of course, the goal of every insulin regimen is to mimic our physiology and of a healthy pancreas. And these pumps use basal bolus insulin delivery, which can literally almost mimic the physiology. Now, when using in insulin pump therapy with rapid acting insulin, you can intentionally plan, program the pump to deliver different amounts of insulin throughout the day to better match the patient's basal insulin requirements. So, how many of us think that through the day, awake or sleeping, that the pancreas is giving the exact same amount of insulin all the day? So this does not happen, and that is why the pumps are very, very handy to handle this. Of course, just to show you the history, 1963, Dr. Arnold Kaddish was the first insulin pump you can see, and the biostator, the Dana pump. This was the official, of course, one of the commercialized first mini-med insulin pump. And of course, the mini-med introduced the first popular insulin pump, mini-med, 502 way back in 1983, and this system soon underwent significant improvement in size and programmability. Done? Okay. 2004, the insulin pumps in India, it started coming up and where it was available and of course the longer time it was required for patients to educate and also to adapt by the physicians. So this was one of the paradigm 722 which came in October 2006 to our country. And of course, later on the transmitter size was diminished, as you can see, in size. And this is the real-time CGM, which I'm showing. And of course, this depicts the various developmental program in the CGMs and the pumps. Now, bionic pancreas, it contains basically three components, the CGM, the programmer, and the insulin infusion pump. We know the CGM, it tracks the blood sugar levels every minutes and using a tiny sensor under, uh, which is inserted under the skin and the sensor wirelessly sends the information to a programmer which calculates how much insulin is needed and signals the insulin infusion pump. And of course the pump uh, delivers the small doses of insulin throughout the day when the blood glucose levels are not in your target range and there are different types of insulin pumps. So essentially this figure shows the components and mechanism of how uh, artificial pancreas or the bionic pancreas work. You can clearly see there. And this, the bionic pancreas, the speciality, it's a bihormonal secretion of both insulin and glucagon is combined. And it's an integrated CGM, which fully automated. And the bolus priming can be done on the type of breakfast and the size of the meal also, which can be individually designed. And of course, they are based on the hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia minimizer. They've been classified as the first generation, second generation, and the third generation. For example, Generation one, it's called very low glucose, uh, low glucose insulin half pump, where the pump shuts off completely when user not responding to low glucose alarm. Whereas if you see in second generation four, automated basal or hybrid closed loop, where the closed loop at all times with meal time manual assist boluses. Whereas if you see the last one, third generation, sixth one, it's fully automated and there is no uh, manual at all, and it's a closed loop, complete closed loop. And this is what I was talking about, how it shuts down when the sensor senses before the hypoglycemia sets in. Now, Dr. Demenio said it is a platform that makes a great drug better. That's what is insulin after 100 years, wherein the past studies have clearly shown the automated insulin delivery have repeatedly shown that insulin needs very dramatically from, uh, uh, very dramatically from day to day and including in the night. For example, Type 1 may require 10 units, 7 units, 13 units on different days. And systems like bionic pancreas only can adapt to these variations of insulin needs every five minutes in a personalized manner, the insulin can be delivered. And the best part is only the body weight information is needed to begin the dosing of insulin and glucagon both. And 
limitations of course, the low batteries, delayed action of subcutaneous infusion insulin, incorrect adaptations of controlled algorithms, sensor unavailability due to loss of communications or non-compliance of the patient, and of course when it comes to the pump, the infusion set can occlude, set leakage, dislocation hardware, and since it's a bihormonal system, again the problems related to that each system, switching of insulin and glucagon uh, correctly has to happen. If one gets off, then all these are technical problems. Now let us look at the evidence, the effect of bionic pancreas on glycemic control. You can very clearly see there the mean blood glucose and the time spent below 70, how it has improved with the bionic pancreas. And this is another paper which talks about the outpatient overnight glucose control with dual hormone artificial pancreas versus single hormone artificial pancreas or conventional insulin therapy. All three arms have been compared in type 1, which is an open label randomized control trial. And these are the baseline characteristics and these are the conventional, the single hormone and the dual hormone Comparison, you can very clearly see here in this slide the results of patients with at least one hypoglycemic event, the median time of hypoglycemia, and of course, the number of hypoglycemia events you can see on the dual hormone artificial pancreas, it's literally zero when you compare with the conventional and the single hormone. And of course, artificial pancreas in India, this is one of the systems which is available, 780. G, which is a self-adjusting basal insulin with a new auto-correction, which automatically corrects and adjusts the insulin delivery every five minutes. And this is the three components of this, which is available in a country, it's about six lakhs. And that's the limiting factor for most of our patients which are needy. And of course, it automatically adjusts, as I said, literally corrects everything, including there is a correction doses, which is there in this uh, uh, instrument. And Based on this, there is a data which shows that 84% of the subjects achieved the goal and 79% of patients achieved the time in range when it uh, 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 results with this uh, CGM, I mean, I mean the 780G pump. Yeah, this was the first generation. Of course, the hybrid system 670G was the dream of closing loop has become a reality with this FDA approval hybrid CL uh, 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 system, the 670G, where pump would increase insulin delivery when glucose is high and reduce automatically. Users still have to use boluses for this in this model. This was an earlier model. But they have been uh, partnering with Dexcom and uh, uh, this another company, this DBGL1, where the closed loop, and they received the CE mark on about uh, 2018 itself. And it is the second hybrid closed loop approved in Europe for adults in type 1 diabetes. And this Omnipod Dash is another one which launched in 2019, which is a very compact one. It's free from the azels of tubing and these daily injections. And of course, this is one, the we are not waiting, the hashtag which became a rally cry among the citizen hackers, basically, where they used the uh, uh, various apps in the Apple phones, the Android phones, all that, to combine with the available the uh, pumps. This is some evidence to show the do-it-yourself artificial pancreas, a comprehensive review with our own uh, uh, Jyoti Dev and Dr. Bansi and uh, Dr. Sheshadri and Gopal Krishnan. They showed that improvement in quality of life, this is an Indian study which I'm quoting, quality of life after being on pump was appreciated by 92% and the level of satisfaction was rated as fully satisfied by 52% responders. 26% found the pump is satisfactory, 90% thought that the pump met their expectations. That's the best part of that. And at a glance, if you see the CGM sensor, receiver, and the CAD, which is the algorithm device, with the insulin pump, this is what makes it, you know, the uh, artificial pancreas is very handy, very useful for our patients who, uh, who are affordable, of course. And what are the results of these is improvements in the technologies. You can clearly see the technology effect on improving A1C estimated from mean glucose levels. The pink one is the clo closed loop ones. You can see the better compliance. And also you can see the effect on improving time in range when it comes to the, the CGMs. And you can see in the pink areas, this is what is the smart guard technology with suspended automata automation has significantly showed the overall time in range spent by our patients. And of course, the unanswered questions remains. Whether it is justifiable to add glucagon to the artificial pancreas is a challenging question to answer. Single hormone and the dual hormone systems are yet to be compared in larger and longer period of studies with important endpoints such as incidence of severe hypoglycemia and A1C concentration. And the dual hormone system will likely produce reduced hypoglycemic events for sure, potentially improving quality of life, but it also necessitates an additional catheter and additional drug manipulation to be there, which again transmits into the cost. And of course, cost we need to keep in mind whenever in our country. Thank you very much for patient hearing.